Today, we're looking at Noodler's Beaver. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Noodler's Beaver is a fantastic magenta brown ink. Before we get to the writing samples, I really like to look at the sciencey bits. Up first is the chromatography, and I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies over the years. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down, I put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds, and I let it seep up the page. And we see we start with a nice pink that quickly turns to a magenta as it works its way all the way up. At the very top, we see this neat kind of purple and yellow that's across the top. It's really neat where it's faded in there. Now the one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into the water for that 10 to 15 seconds and it looks the same. It comes up, but more the brown is obvious in the chromatography. As it comes up, we got that magenta, the yellow with a little purple, and a brown line across the top. Beautiful. Now the resistance tests are done to see how this can be expected to perform on paper, and more importantly, how it can be expected to clean out of the pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Now the highlighter on a majority, it seemed like it was fine, but on the letter H, I see some definite smearing that's going on. So I don't know what happened in that particular part, but I would avoid it as a note taker. Water certainly had it reactivated and moved, leaving mostly behind the pink undertone. Flush completely obliterated it off the page. So if you have trouble getting it out of your pen with water, pen flush, gone, no problem. There's no reason to get to the bleach part that did also completely remove it from the page. Now this is a bell curve or a normal distribution. For the 365 inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5. Now, the realm of normal goes from 2.1 to 2.9. Noodler's Beaver has a viscosity of 1.85. That means it's a wet ink. It's got a high flow to it. Now, this bell curve or normal distribution, this is for the dry times. Now, I have found in the 365 inks I tested, I have an average dry time of 17 seconds, with normal being the range from 13 to 21 seconds. Noodler's Beaver had an average dry time of 15 seconds, which puts it right in that normal range with no problems. How do I find my average dry time? I use my writing samples. I take the average dry time on the extra fine and the medium nib on my Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper. Now, let's look at the writing samples. I've got this ink in sample form, and to keep writing samples consistent, as I'm always doing, I am using a Jin Hao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub. I am using a Jin Hao X450 with a Goulet medium and a Jin Hao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's look at Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no real ghosting, much more on camera than in person. With the 1.1, we have no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. Onto the extra fine, we have no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, some minor shading that goes on, some minor, given spots, given spots enough throughout that I would call it there, 10 seconds to dry. With a medium nib, we have no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, more shading, much more shading than we got with the extra fine, and 14 seconds to dry. Looking at the scrubby, again, extreme left to extreme right, we do see that we expect to get some shading here. And because it's a dark enough ink, the smear, we can recover. Now looking at Tomoe River. We have no bleeding, we have ghosting. 1.1, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. Just dark. It almost looks like it's becoming a brown right here, but I see this as like a magenta brown color. We get that with the 1.1. Looking at the extra fine, we have no hail, or no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. 15 seconds to dry. With a medium, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. 
23 seconds to dry. Scrubbies show us that we're not going to get any kind of color variation. The smear, I never get to recover smears on Tomoe River. It's just the reason I actually don't care for Tomoe River paper. If I were to be a little messy and actually smear it, I'd like to stand a chance. Now when we get to the Rhodia paper, we have no bleeding, no ghosting. On the 1.1, we have no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. Some shade spots occur. Just the one or two. Gets a little darker here, a little lighter here. So maybe just a little bit. On the extra fine, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shading. Not with the extra fine. 11 seconds to dry. On a medium, on a medium we have no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. We're definitely get. I'm sorry, I said no shade. We're definitely getting shade. We're definitely getting color variation that's occurring. It's not huge and heavy, but it's definitely there. It's like minor bits of personality sparkling through. We see it on the on the lazy. We see it on the fox. We see it on the the. 17 seconds to dry. When I look at the scrubbies, I see much more color variation in the medium than I do in the extra fine. And we could definitely save it when we smear it. Now, when I took my notes for this, I took my notes with the Ahab, where I modified the flex nib, and it it just, if you pay attention to the order of the pens that they come out, it's straight down the order. I wasn't concerned with putting this ink in any other pen. It just happened to be there, okay? But if we're looking at the writing sample where I'm taking notes, we do get color changes when I put it down very thick or not as thick. Uh, that's why I, I said, you know, you can get shade, just don't expect tons of it, but you can get some. So I'm looking at white lines paper. White lines paper does have some bleeding. It did not bleed onto the page underneath. It does have some ghosting quite a bit. With a 1.1, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. With the extra fine, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. Four seconds to dry, so there's a trade-off there. You lose any of the shade you might have been able to get sometimes, like we saw with the Ahab pen. But four seconds. Medium, that's my thumb spot. That's not really shading that's occurring. So we have no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. That's my thumb spot. Very common. I don't know why I do it. Must be when I'm writing for the fine. Five seconds to dry, very close in dry time. Looking at the scrubby for both the extra fine and the medium, I am not expecting to be able to get shading with this ink, but I definitely could recover this. I like white lines paper when it comes to note taking. I like white lines paper when it comes to note taking because of how the whole app works. So teaching, I make student notes on the white lines paper so that if they download the app, it sends a PDF straight to their phone when they snap a picture. Apica paper, put something behind this. On the Apica paper, it's the Apica CD notebook. We have no bleeding, no real ghosting. I'm gonna say it over, it shows up on camera way more than in person. I'd use both sides of that in my notebooks without a problem, although I'm not normally a both sides person. With a 1.1, we have no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. But a nice, again, it's that turning right towards brown. When I go down to the extra fine, it's definitely a dark magenta more than it is a brown. On the extra fine, we have no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, none, none. Eight seconds to dry. On the medium, a little bit darker, a little bit darker a tone, starts to get towards that magenta brown moment. No feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no real shading. This has been a disappointment for me with Noodler's inks. I was really looking forward to this one, because look at the scrubby, no color variation. I could recover it if I smeared it, but as Noodler's inks go, I've been a little disappointed with this one. Their production inks to me are fantastic, and this one just didn't have it. It didn't have the it. I don't know what. Je ne sais quoi. I wish I knew what that meant, but I don't know what.
That's all I got for the writing Instead sample. of finding inks that look like Noodler's Beaver, I would prefer to find something that really complements that magenta brown on the page, which made me think of like a green brown. The green brown that I got from Noodler's L. Lawrence. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I would invite you to subscribe. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing sample. I then put the ink in a different pen and write with it for a day. And then I put it into a Noodler's Ahab to take my notes for this video. So what do I think of Noodler's Beaver? Good shading can be achieved. It can, but don't expect tons of it. Otherwise, I find it as very ho-hum as a color. Now I like Noodler's inks and there's a ton that I have, but this one's just ho-hum. So would I buy a bottle of this ink? No, no I wouldn't, not me. Thanks for watching.